quick question just to see what we're all at. Who's here is running Facebook ads to grow their business? There's a couple. Cool. Who's spending more than, let's say, 10, 10, 10K a month on Facebook ads? There's not many. All right, no worries. Cool. So that, just to get a bit of an idea of where we're all at. So my name is Wilco de Cray, and indeed, we're going to talk about Facebook ads and how to use Facebook ads to grow your business. And all of that really just started actually a couple days after I took this photo. Um, this is 2012. Um, we, my wife and I, we were traveling the world, and we're all on our way to Koh Tao. And I, at that point, I was my business was a WordPress plugin business, so we sold uh, WordPress plugins. And I'm not sure if anyone is selling WordPress plugins. Is anyone selling WordPress plugins? No, good because it is the worst. Like. It's like with SaaS, it either works or it doesn't in a way. But with WordPress plugins, there's all kinds of stuff that just breaks down or like with uh, other plugins that are just not compatible, right? So I went, I went there and I sent back then uh, FE, which was still flipping enterprises an email. I'm like, I, I'm done. Like, this is not fun. I don't like it. Uh, so I sent uh, FE, uh, FE Enterprise an email saying I want to sell my business. And we did, which was awesome. And that was really like the clean slate. I was able to, I, I had dabbled in software for a bit, and I'm like, I'm going to start a SaaS for the very first time. And this was around 2012-ish. And I went back to the Netherlands, where I'm from. Uh, and you always ride a bicycle, as they always say. And I've been working on a new SaaS. I've been building on it for like four or five months. And I was about to launch that product. And at that time, I was mingling in a world which is sort of like the the internet marketing world, the people who are all the direct response marketers with the very long sales pages, and who gets annoyed with like this, the, the very long sales pages, or who at least knows them. Like, it's it's uh, it's very, it's a very kind of aggressive way of marketing, um, but in a way it works really well, right? And I saw a lot of people around me who were doing like a product launch, and the way it works is that they create a new product, and then a couple months out they start inviting affiliates, people who get a commission. And they all make clear, like, on this specific date at 10 a.m. exactly, it's going live, and we need you to be ready to promote it to your audience. And we're going to have a special offer for just a few days. That's it. Special offer. And after a couple days, um, the offer is gone. Now, that, like, that on itself is super, super effective. Like, if, if an offer is, is being brought on the market, that's good, right? You get a lot of people buying that product on the very first day. But the last day of launch, it's, like, insane. It, like, people cannot stand the chance of, like, Missing out, right? They wanna, they wanna grab it. So, I was like, I saw all these people around me doing that model, and I'm like, I'm gonna try it as well, right? I'm gonna try it as well. And I, I actually was uh, riding my bicycle with my wife, my back then girlfriend, now wife. And I was like, what? If, like, I'm gonna, like, we're, we're a week out before it's going live. What if it would do like fifty thousand dollars in a week? Like, what? If, like, what if it would do a hundred thousand in a week? Like, it's not gonna happen. But like, what if, right? That'd be cool. And that was sort of like where my mind was at at that point. And I remember this very clearly. It was January 3rd, and uh, the product went live. And um, what, I, what I didn't even think was possible for the whole week, already, well, like we blew past that on the first day. It, it's nuts. Like, and that's really when I saw the power of a product launch. right? And you could do either one of those th two things. You can say, like, this product, it went live. It, the launch went awesome. And we're going to keep on working on that product. And that is not how my mind worked. I went actually for a, a different tour. Uh, I kept on doing product launches, which is not a good thing, but basically what it meant, like every six months or so, I created a new SaaS and I launched it. And that was my model. And that's obviously not a good business model. Um, but every single launch, it went better and better. And it's really, like it's profitable, but it's, it's a trap because after a year, you got two products and then you got three and four and you need to support them. You need to you know, maintain them and all of that. So it's not really a good model. And best, uh, worst of all, like every single time you do a launch, you go from this to this. Like, that's my wife, by the way. It, like, it's not fun at all. You, like, you don't eat, you don't sleep, you don't drink. Like, you just work. And the worst part is you work for a couple months in advance. You have a launch of like a week. And after that, sales are flat. Like, because you had this special offer, right? And everybody who was considering it, they already bought it during that one week offer. And um, even worse, like, even after months of work, your launch could just explode in the middle of the launch, right? For example, one of my last launches that I did. Um, uh, like I said, you don't eat, you don't sleep, you don't drink, you just work. And on the second day of the launch, I got a call from my wife. So I'm like, <laughs> kind of annoyed, like, why, why are you calling me? Like, I'm busy, kind of. Like, So I grabbed the phone, I'm like, yeah, what's up? And there was a guy on the line, uh, not my wife. I'm like, that's all. And he's like, yeah, we're taking her to the hospital. Like, she's been in an accident. And at that point, everything stops, right? You like, you drop it down, like, you, you rush to the hospital, and you take care of her, and she's fine right now, it's all good. Uh, but obviously, that showed me that the launch model is not a model, right? But there's a lot of lessons to be learned there in terms of like the, 
taking the good parts of the aggressive kind of marketing and, and putting that to use in a way that um, actually serves uh, our customers and also grows an ongoing business, right? So the last two launches that I sort of did was uh, for Viral and Connect.io. This is a couple of years back. And I decided that's it. I'm out of the launch game. Doesn't matter how profitable it is. It's not a business model. It's not long term. I'm going to focus on just these two pr products. And that's all I'm going to do, right? Well, Greg, you already mentioned it uh, briefly. A viral is a uh, viral referral marketing platform, so people can run viral contests or viral giveaways to their audience to build a bigger uh, email list. And Connectio is a suite of various tools for Facebook advertisers, so you can either automate stuff or make your ads more efficient. Anyone is using either one of these tools or knows what they are? Some people do. Cool. That's a good thing. So that's what I uh, decided to focus on. But because of what I had bef done before, and it went really, really well, I sort of had this challenge, like, how do I get the word out of these tools in a way that, how do you say that? Like, I would say I was kind of spoiled from everything that happened beforehand. So I was not going to settle for, like, oh, I'm going to do some content marketing, and in, like, six months, we're going to have some customers. Or I'm going to do, like, the free trial period, and, like, uh, hopefully I'm going to be profitable in a while. Like, um, because I've... I was sort of spoiled. I was looking for a way, like, how do you get this out in a way that is fast? You can scale it up, like, not infinite, like, unlimited, but, like, you can scale it up very far, uh, but can also be very profitable right from the start, right? And then this guy came on TV, right? That part may not be, like, it was not that time frame, but then I started up with right, Facebook ads. So, like, like, you can scale it up pretty much infinitely. Like, everyone is on Facebook. Not everyone, actually, but uh, most people are. A lot of people are. Um, so I, I started running Facebook ads, right? And the thing is that when I run Facebook ads, I want to I wanna have an ROI. I'm not the kind of guy who's like, oh, yeah, branding, and they, they know my brand, and maybe in six months from now, I'm gonna, you know, they're going to buy. Or maybe you know, I, I know my numbers. Like I spend money right now, and it's going to take me eight months. And by the eighth month, then I'm going to be at profit. Because like, first of all, it's a slow process. And secondly, it's hard to optimize. So I want to run ads to, in, a, in a way that immediately has an ROI. Like ideally, when they click on my ad within the first week, I have a good ROI, and everything that's coming after, all the recurring after, is bonus, right? So that's sort of my mentality, and that's what we're gonna basically show you today how I'm doing that. Um, so let's dive in. That cool? So it's actually a pretty simple process, and I know that everyone is sort of like at a different stage here. Uh, so I'm gonna break down a three-step process, and while doing that. I'm going to go through, sort of through it at a high level, but I'll make a couple of deep dives in some specific parts because I know some of you that are going to be like, oh, I want to have like the, the broad idea, and some of you may be like, oh, I want to have some nitty-gritty details. So this way, everyone sort of gets a piece of the pie that um, they'll get value from it. So it's basically pretty simple. You create a great offer, you make sure uh, you get it to convert well enough, and then you're on Facebook ads to it, right? Because first of all, when people say, like, oh, Facebook ad isn't working for me, usually their Facebook ads isn't a problem. They say, like, but my Facebook ads are, like, too expensive. Whoever thought that their Facebook ads who has tried it were too expensive? Anyone thought that? No? You're all geniuses. Let me, like, tell me. You can come on stage. Like, most, a lot of people, they tell me, like, Facebook ads, it's too expensive. I can't afford it. But that's not a problem. The problem is that you don't know how to get your visitors to convert well enough because, like, there's no way you can get your traffic for free from Facebook, not with Facebook ads. Um, but you can get them to convert. Like, There's no limit to that if your funnels are good in order. So that's what we're going to talk about. First thing is obviously create a great offer. And great, your offer is not just your product. right? It's way broader than that. Your product is just a part of it. Your pricing is just a part of it. But you need to have something that really that grabs the attention and like is just you know, an easy sell, basically. And the first thing I always tell people when you're creating an offer is to make sure that you create it as a new opportunity. I see a lot of people, they, they create product and they're like, oh, how, like tell me, what's, what does your business do? And they tell me, like, oh, basically I'm a better version than X competitor, or like, I'm, a cheaper, I'm cheaper than them. Or like, and it ends with ER, usually it's an, it's, an, it's an improvement offer. And if it's something is an improvement offer, it's not easy to sell. Because if you say, like, oh, we're better than this competitor, then for someone to actually buy your product, they'll need to sort of, like, all right, th this other product isn't good enough, and you do it slightly better. And we're all biased, and we think, like, no, no, we're not slightly better. We're, like, freaking amazing. But in, our, in, the, mar in the market's mind, the consumer's mind, it's usually, like, if you're doing something better, it's still, like, an improvement, right? So you want to make sure you're, you're presented as a completely new opportunity. And, I mean, for example, Slack, they didn't say, like, oh, yeah, we're a better version of email. No way. Like, we're a completely new way to communicate with your team. And it makes it way easy to sell because if you would just say, like, what's a better version than email, then people like already used email, so what's going to be different about this? 
but if they hear, hear about like, all right, it's, it's, it's a new opportunity, like a new way to communicate with your team. It's sort of like sexy and appealing. I'm like, I want to give it a try. Like I have this problem with my team communication. Email doesn't really work, but this is a new opportunity. It might actually work, right? Same thing with Intercom. Intercom did, it wasn't a better ticket system, right? All right, my current support system isn't good. This one is better. No, we're a completely new way to communicate with your customers. Completely new, never done before. Even though you could argue that oh, it was just better than the other ones, but it's not how they positioned it, right? So I wanna, like, I wanna stress out, it's not just about your product, but it's about how you explain your product to your market. And sometimes it's not even that hard. Like for example, ConvertKit, and we already seen it, saw this before, what, what they did at some point is they didn't just say like, oh, we're an autoresponder or like we're slightly better. They just picked a, a deeper market. Like we're not going for everyone. We'll just pick a sub-market and we tell them like, we are specifically for you. Like they did with Pat Flynn. We are the autoresponder for bloggers. And right away, when you say it, you're, that's unique, right? Because you can then say like, we are specifically for you, for bloggers. So don't worry about all the other ones because they're like for everyone. They're like, we understand you, right? Whatever it is, you need to make sure that you are creating something new, a new opportunity uh, in the customer's mind. And um, there's a book, I'm not sure what the exact title is, but it talks about the concept of blue ocean versus red ocean, which is pretty much the same thing, where like everyone is in this red ocean, which is like, like all the sharks are out there and it's bloody and it's hard and you're competing against each other and one is cheaper, one is slightly better, but you basically wanna create your own new market, the blue ocean, where you don't have any competitors. And that's how, that's all you need to do for that is create it as a new opportunity. Make yourself, like set yourself apart from anyone else in the marketplace. And the reason why you need to do this, first of all, is because it's a lot easier to sell. And secondly, if we are gonna run Facebook ads that are gonna be profitable, like really quickly, um, it's not like people are gonna, you know, they're on Facebook, they're not waiting for you. I mean, if they're searching on Google for your solution, sure, then you can have a different approach. But you're sort of like disturbing them. They're checking out, they're, they're, they're watching some viral cat video, whatever, and all of a sudden you were there. Like, like if you wanna take them off guard and you really, really wanna get them into your funnel and actually take them action, you need to make sure that like, this is completely new, you never tried this before, this, is so, this solves your problem better than anything else. That's, a, that's one part of the funnel. Now, what I really, uh, what I really arg argument as well is to create a special offer. And the reason why we create a special offer is so we can also take the special offer away. And just like I said from the launches before, before um, when I was doing a launch, the last day was always the best day of the launch, right? Because people are afraid to miss out. And if you have a special offer then that you make available only for, like for that specific funnel from people who are coming from your Facebook ads, um, you can then also take it away. You can run it for a limited time, and that's super powerful. And oftentimes, you don't have to, um, like, you don't, want, you don't want to collude with your brand and all of that, uh, but oftentimes people already have it, right? People already have a discounted package, for example, for their, for their uh, yearly, if you have a yearly plan, and you can use that in that funnel. Or you can add some extra benefits. Maybe you want to keep the pricing the same, right? But you add something else. If you buy it here, then you know what? You get all these things <coughs> extra as well. And you can even go a level deeper, uh, which is what I've done in the past as well, is that sometimes you want to give these extra benefits, right, to, to those people who are coming into your special funnel, but you want to be fair to everyone who goes to your website straight and also you know, buys. You don't, want to, you don't want to be not fair because that's just not cool, not right. So what we sometimes do, and maybe it's a bit of a gray area, I'll let you decide to that, but what, we, what we've done is like we added some extra benefits, right? And on our website, we don't mention it, right? And then we have, we have this special offer, and we tell them, like, if you buy now, you also get this, this, and this, and this. And they're like, that's awesome. They go to a website, not a word. So they only get it, like, we don't say they only get it if they, if they buy it there, but that's sort of like what we kind of imply. Uh, and they buy it and they get all these extra. But if they go to our website and they don't men we don't mention it, but they buy, they still get it. But it's like, we, th then we just under promise over deliver. It's like, oh, you, we didn't mention it, but you're also getting all this stuff. So this way, everyone gets the same deal, but you can still sort of like play with it. And once again, it, it, it's a bit of a branding question as well. Um, and like how you, wanna, how you wanna do your marketing. Um, but it is super effective, and that's what I mentioned, but like the super aggressive marketing where it's sort of like take parts, bits of part, pieces of it, and I use it um, in, a, in a way that I think is uh, ethical and all right. So make a special offer, and also add bonuses, sort of an overlap, to overcome ob objections. You don't just wanna like make your offer better by saying like, oh, here's a cool offer, or here's a cool bonus. Like, if you're gonna get people off guard on Facebook, they're not ready to buy your product yet. You're gonna have like all kinds of objections that 
reasons why they're not yet ready, right? And you want to figure out what these reasons are, right? So you want to research on what like, is not the right time, or like maybe they'll say like, ah, oh, but like I need to have more traffic first, or I need to have more leads first. Whatever it is, try to figure out what their objections are, and then, and then ask yourself, like, can I create something that would overcome that objection, right? If they would say, oh, but I don't have enough leads yet, then maybe you want to create something that would help them with that. Maybe you want to create even like a course or like a guide, guide plan, like, no, no, like, this is like, we have a step-for-step -step blueprint that will help you and your team, you can just pass it on to your team, how to get more leads. So you're thinking like, I don't have enough leads, don't worry. Like with this, you, you will have enough leads. And obviously they will still need to put it into place, but while selling it, you, you already give the solution to them. And that's just a way to, where you can, how you can use your bonuses as a way to basically remove all the objections that they may have, right? So that's a very uh, powerful part as well. So then you have like a unique positioning, which is, which is um, a new opportunity, and you have like a special, ideally a special prize with some, maybe some extra benefits, which could also be extra features, for example. Uh, and the bonuses that you add on top of that package, uh, which you're gonna give away for free, are, are all in there to overcome objections, right? That's sort of like on a rough, um, in a rough area, like how to, oops, is it working? Yeah, how to, uh, how to create a good offer. Now, once you have a good offer, it's not like it's not gonna convert. Like you have a good offer, like what do you do? You need to find a way that it actually converts. As I said, Facebook ads, it's all about money in versus money out. Like you need to make sure that uh, it converts really well. And that, that's not easy, right? It takes a lot of experimenting and, and testing because what may work for one person may not work for another. And like the very first thing I tried was um, a very long sales page. And that right there, what you see, it's not four sales pages. It's actually one sales page um, and it like it, it just, it didn't fit on the slide. So I have to put it in four, but like it's insanely long. Now that did not work at all. So I basically I drove Facebook ads straight to a sales page, didn't work. But hey, I didn't know what I was doing yet. I was just trying, think, trying things out. Next thing I tried was like the three part video sequence, right? This is sort of like this, day, this thing by, uh, by a marketer called um, Jeff Walker is his name. Basically where you basically send people to an opt-in page, they subscribe, and then you go through three different videos. Like day one, you get a video, day two, you get a video, and day three, you get a video. And it's all there in, with the intention of getting them to you know, see the problem, see the opportunity that they have, see the new, like get them to become, uh, become a customer. Did not work at all. It, it, it converted, but like not well enough to make our Facebook ads work. So I kept on trying and trying, and all of this takes time, right? But it's all about finding the mechanism, finding the way that will work for your product. And then I, came, I got to do webinars. And for me, for at least for a viral, for example, uh, webinars were working really well. I'm like, this is awesome, right? Um, and it's not, I'm not saying that you have to do webinars, but it really depends on uh, a lot of things. Like in my, my rule of thumb, so like, this is for yearly prices, by the way, and oh, it's actually, part of it is gone, which is fine, no worries. Uh, but basically, if it's, if it's like just a couple hundred dollars, um, then you can get away, but like immediately do a sales letter. If it's like up until $1,000 a year, you can, do, you can do a webinar. And if it's over that, I would, like I don't have experience in that myself, um, but from what I hear, uh, most people are doing, uh, if it's between like $1,000 and $5,000 a year, a lot of people, they do like a short, like 30 minute kind of webinar, uh, but it ends with an application to a phone call and then you get the inbound leads and you can uh, get them to close. But like, I'm not saying that this is how, what you need to follow. I'm saying is that once you have an offer, you need to find how to get it to convert. And it doesn't mean that I, ha I know what I'm gonna sell and I have this offer, I'm just gonna create a page or a sales page or, and I'm gonna drive ads to it and it's gonna work. That's not how it's gonna work. You're gonna be disappointed maybe first, but you, this is the part where you need to keep on trying until you find something that's gonna convert for you. And it's not, you have to sit through this and put a lot of time in experimenting and testing and optimizing and split testing and all that fun stuff. Um, but at some point you're gonna find something that is converting for you. It's not converting, you delete it, you start over. And you keep on trying until you find what works. I wanna dive a little bit deeper into a webinar for those who are doing a webinar or considering a webinar. Uh, so I call this point 2B, creating a converting webinar. Right? Because that for me was the one that was converting and I'm more than happy to share some uh, tips and insights on what is, how that's going. Now, I use a certain script for this, I co it's called the Perfect webinar script, I did not create it, I'm not that smart. I, it's created by a guy called Russell Brunson, and I'm not sure, but I think it's actually available free or at least partial free. So if you would Google for perfect webinar by Russell Brunson, you'll probably find this script. But the whole concept of this is, you start with an introduction, obviously you make a big promise, like what is the problem that you're gonna, re that you're gonna resolve? 
uh, hook to the end to make sure like, if you stay away until the end, you're gonna get X, Y, or Z. You give them an extra incentive, right? Some kind of a freebie, something that you're giving away for free if they stay. Um, but at that point, obviously, you're going into the content. And the content is there to provide value. But I see, like I've been on a webinar before where people just, they, they try to teach as much as possible because in their minds, like if I teach as much as, much as possible, then they're gonna like me and they're gonna buy my product. And <laughs> that's not, like I split tested it. The more you teach, the less you sell, as weird as it is, right? So you don't wanna teach too much, but you wanna be very specific in what you tell in that whole content area. You're not gonna sell your product or anything like that in that area. But in that area, you're breaking all the, like, the, the, the belief patterns that they have that you need to break. Like, if, for example, if I would do a webinar for Slack, I, I could, for example, do a webinar where I, I talk about like, email, like why email is not good, anymore, good, it's not good enough. But here's what is better. Like, by the end of that content piece, they will already be sold on the product Slack in this case without knowing that Slack exists. But then you ask them, like, hey, by the way, is it okay if I talk a couple of minutes about a special offer I created for you guys? Because you always want to ask because, you know, first of all, it's the right thing to do. And secondly, um, it helps in conversions if they say yes. So they commit to that. Say, yes, that's cool. And then it's like, now, nah, all right, so now you already know. You need to have a, something that does this. Email is not good enough, but you need to have, you know what? And here's exactly what we have. Like, this is the offer that this is the product that's going to help you. And then all the objections come in their mind. Like, no, but, like, I, 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 my team isn't going to be, like, involved, like whatever all the objections are, and that's when you start adding, oh, if you get this product, you also get this bonus, overcomes this objection. You're also gonna get this, overcomes this objection, right? So you're gonna be really, uh, point by point, you're gonna overcome all the objections as much as you can. And there's some, some hard selling in there as well, and uh, I know quite a few are from, the, from Europe, as am I, and I hate selling. But once again, I, I tested it out where I did one, did, where I did sell versus where I did not sell, and the selling part, <laughs> It does work, and I always tell myself, like, I know my product is awesome, and I do them a favor if they actually buy. Like, I know I can help them, and that's, I always tell that right before the webinar just to make myself sort of feel at ease that I'm trying to sell to them. Um, so, yeah, it's one of these things. Maybe some people are very good at it. I'm just not, but I still do it because it works. Once again, we need something that converts really well. And what I do is I don't just do one webinar and that's it. I actually run... Um, uh, the first webinar is not to make sales, it's just to collect data, right? So right after the webinar, I send them an email, it's like, hey, do you hate me? That's, a, that's an email title that always gets an insane good open rate. Um, and then I basically ask, like, like, I saw you attended the webinar, but I noticed you didn't buy, like, why not? Like, and I, like, I want to dive deeper, and I actually go one-on-one, -on -one asking people, like, what do you think of the webinar? Like, why did, what were the objections? I try to learn as much as I can. I look, I look at the chat from the webinar. Like, everything I do initially is to learn from what people, why people are not buying, what they think, and I improve something. That's all that matters at that point, right? And then I'm gonna try out the webinars in different ways. The, the whole offer, I keep the exact same. But the, the content part, I completely change every single time. Like I do it maybe once a week. Every single time I get a new group of people onto the webinar, and I just do like, I put it in Excel, right, this angle, how many people, what's the, what's the percentage of people that actually bought? Next time, what's the percentage now? And I keep on tweaking and tweaking and tweaking until I get to a point where like, all right, this webinar is converting, and now I, I know what angle sort of works, what, what sort of the problem, uh, what language do I need to use, what do I, you know, what do, I do? And then uh, what I, but this is also once again uh, a bit of a branding thing, I put them into an automated webinar. So in other words, instead of having to do them live every single week, um, we use an, basically a recorded version of the webinar, which if people subscribe, they can then watch. Now, obviously you don't want to mention it's live, but then again, one of these gray areas, so like we don't mention it's not live as well. Like it's, I'm not like, once again, a branding thing. If I've tested out when we say like this is automated, then it immediately drops all, like it lowers conversion and like big time. Um, so one of these trade-offs that you'll have to um, decide for your business as well. So you want to turn it into an auto webinar, which you can do it just like that image in a very complex way. I've tried that. I don't, wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I would go for the most straightforward way possible. So I want to dive in a, little, a couple of tips for those who are, want to run an automated webinar. And the first one is obviously to keep it simple. And the tools that I use are, first of all, EverWebinar. If you're starting with a, uh, an automated webinar, just buy EverWebinar, and that's it. Don't do anything else until it's converting. And after it's actually converting, then maybe you want to have you, the emails go out from your own email system, like Drip, or in my case, I use ActiveCampaign. So there's some tools. But initially, I started this whole big pie of tools with like KISS metrics and all. Like I wanted it to be perfect. Don't do it, because it will just <coughs> slow things down. Start with EverWebinar. And that's it until it actually converts. That's at this point 
the only tool that I really know of that is doing a good job in like automated webinars. Um, and then r the timing of the webinar, because initially when I started doing automated webinars, in my mind, I'm like, I want to sort of like make it feel like as if it is kind of live, even though I'm not mentioning it. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to do it once a day. So people sign up, and it's going to be in the next day at, for example, 4 p.m., the webinar is going to start. And then I did a split test between that versus the webinar who starts every hour. So if someone comes to my landing page, they're going to see, like, oh, the webinar is starting in, in 45 minutes. And the one, if it is working, running every hour, it's converting way, way better. So if you're doing this, make sure to run it every hour and not um, every um, 24 hours, uh, not every once, not like once a day. And we recently did a test for like every 15 minutes, and that converts even better. Because people come to the page, they're from Facebook, and they're like, wait, wait a second, that, what a coincidence. Like, it's almost starting. They don't have to wait. They can immediately go through. And because of that, the, the uh, show up rate is a lot higher for the, um, for the actual webinar. Um, and also a good tip to improve your conversions on your landing page is to hard code your uh, date and time. So usually there's like this <coughs> Webinar Jam plugin, and people all immediately recognize, like, that's Webinar Jam. It's obvious, right? So what we actually do, it's a simple JavaScript. If you have someone on your team who is technical, they can definitely add it in. But it's basically just a, um, it seems that the date and time is actually there on the page, but it just updates every, every hour. But this way, um, immediately big, big boost in conversions from uh, visitors to actual signups. And also an exit pop-up, if they don't sign up, but they, but they're, with their mouse, they're about to leave the page. I showed them a, an exit pop-up saying the next class starts in whatever minutes. Uh, also, we get a lot of, um, uh, we get a good boost of conversions on that exit pop-up as well. So another uh, split test that we did. Uh, follow up with Facebook Messenger. We also do, like, if they sign up for your webinar, we have a link just saying, like, hey, uh, click here. And then basically they go to ManyChat, or you can use with other tools as well. Uh, anyone uses Facebook Messenger? Some people are, right? ManyChat, yeah. Uh, it's super effective. Only thing I wouldn't do, it's funny, and then I haven't, like, we we're doing still doing more tests on this, but if you're doing an automated webinar and we send them a message like, right away, it actually lowers conversions and lowers attendees. And I think it's because we're drawing people to Facebook, and once they're on Facebook, they're distracted by, I don't know, cat videos or something. So you want to send them a message only after the webinar, actually, um, to make sure that um, they're first going to pay attention to your webinar, right? So follow up with Facebook Messenger and split test your test your landing pages. And uh, this is more for those who are already running, uh, uh, using every webinar already. There's not a lot of good ways to actually split test, and I've tried a lot of different ways. And the best way is to just duplicate, create multiple webinars, and just use webinar, web, uh, every webinar statistics. So you create multiple landing pages, like version 1A, version 1B, and you just send the traffic randomly to one of these pages, and each one of them has their own webinar jam. That's after all, like I did a lot of different tools, Kiss Metrics, Google Analytics, a lot of different tools, but that's the easiest and the most reliable way to see which landing page converts best. Because as always, you want to split test. Once again, you always keep testing to make sure that you have a mechanism that's converting for you. And the last part for the webinar, automated webinars is to, um, uh, this is more like for the techie people, uh, to make sure that you have your separate follow-up automations based on what they did, right? We already talked about, you already talked about, um, where are you? I know. Uh, about personalization. So what are they are? They did attend, did not attend, or maybe they attended, but they left the webinar before an hour, before you even talked about your product. They all want to have a different message, right? Maybe they left within the first 15 minutes. You're not going to, you're not going to send them an email like, hey, what do you think of the product? Because they have no clue. You want to send them an email, hey, I, I noticed you, you were there, but you left early. Like here, you can watch the replay here. If they, if they were there and they watched the whole thing through, they've seen your whole pitch, but they, haven't, they didn't buy, you can send them an email like, hey, I saw you, like, you were there, but like, why didn't you buy? Do you have any questions I can answer? Or if they didn't show up at all, then you obviously want to you give them more reasons why they should show up. It was apparently, it wasn't important enough for them. So you want to you focus on the problems that you can actually resolve in your webinar and then send them a replay version of your webinar or send them to a new webinar that you're doing. Right? So that's... Um, that's in your follow-up email sequence, if you, are, if you are at that point. Now, once you have a converting mechanism, right? So we have an offer that you, you have a good positioning, you have a special offer, and maybe you're, running a, maybe you're running a webinar, but maybe you found a different mechanism or just a sales page, or maybe you are, have a phone call, but something that is converting, not only you want to run ads to it, right? Um, there's quite a few lessons that we learned, uh, all by split testing, that I sort of want to go through step by step um, for those who are running ads or are going to run ads. Because, and the first thing is that 
video ads rock. Like, almost all of my ads that are converting well, they're with video. Um, and I use my own face usually. You don't have to do that. You can have someone in your team or you can have different kind of videos. But videos are just a lot more engaging. Um, and there's always people who prefer to read and there's always people who prefer to actually watch a video. And that's why I always have the combination of the two. So whatever is in that video is usually roughly the same as what I have in the text because I always find that you know, either they watch the video or they read the text. Um, plus, Facebook just is in favor of video ads as well because obviously if someone is going to click that video and they're going to watch that video, I have to pay, but that person is still on Facebook. So Facebook knows that people can just scroll down and you know, see another ad and another advertiser needs to pay again. So it's, uh, Facebook is also in favor so, because obviously you know, they're, in, they're in business to make money as well. As they said, Senator, pre-run ads. So that's the first thing, video ads rock. Secondly, story-based ads, right? Um, you don't want to write an ad saying, hey, I got this, this awesome product, or like, hey, um, oh, we solved this problem, and like, shout it out from the rooftops. That's not going to work. People are on Facebook. It's a social platform. They're not expecting to be sold to. So you want to you wanna basically get them into your, into your, into your uh, solution with a story. I, one of my ads, I literally started my ad saying something like, oh, I remember like yesterday, I, was, I checked my, uh, my phone and there it was. Like, I got, I got banned by, by, by Google. I, 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 Something like I was crying. Like it was really a story of me personally, and then I go into like what 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 was the change for me? But now I now I don't have to because now I have this solution, right? And it's really just about telling a story because we are way it's way easier to let people read a story and feel your whatever your message is than just have a robotic sales message on Facebook. But that's because that's just not gonna work, right? I also I also in those texts I use not too much, but I use emoticons. Just once again to make it feel like it's one of the other, one of the Facebook posts that's out there. It's not a clear um, ad, basically, because if it's a clear ad, people are going to be less uh, less interested. And also, uh, yeah, I have the URL in the text multiple times because people may want to may want to click right away. So somewhere in the top of the of the text, I have the URL, but then at the very bottom as well because usually I have a long text because it's a long story. And people, some people immediately want to click, and some people actually go through all the text. And I don't want them to scroll up again because they're not going to do that, right? They're, they're busy. So I want to make sure that the URL is in that text at multiple points. <laughs> and this is another one, uh, use, your, use your own name. And what I mean with that, I also call this the, always call this the two-page strategy. Uh, if, if, you, if you're running ads, you have to reuse your Facebook page, right? And usually you would use your branded Facebook page, whatever your business name is. The thing is that if people see your branded page, immediately they, they know it's an ad, right? But they're not interested yet. They, they're not looking for you yet. So why should they? Like, they just scroll past. And what I notice is that for cold audiences, for people who've never heard of me or our business before, it works way better if I actually use a page with my own name and my own face on it. it makes it sort of seem like, you know, just one a Facebook post, not, it's not specifically an ad. And it just, I felt that uh, we realized that it's, it converts just a lot better. And as soon as they've already seen who we are, from that point onwards, if we're going to retarget those people, it actually is the exact opposite. So that's when we uh, when we use our uh, viral page or our Connectio page, right? So for people who've never heard of this before, we have a page, my face, or someone else's face, like a, basically an attractive character that you're using in your business. Um, that's what we call the attractive character. Like, doesn't have to be attractive. Like, otherwise, I wouldn't have used me myself, I think. But um, so yeah, use, use one page for your cult audience, people who've never heard of you before, and then for your retargeting audiences, you're gonna use your, your uh, branded page. Makes it, makes it a lot easier to uh, sort of um, get it to convert in our split test. Also, make them curious in the very first couple of seconds of your video. At some point, I was running a lot of video ads, and I thought it was going really well. Like, ROI-wise, it was good, right? Money in versus money out, I was doing well. And at some point, I had a phone call with my Facebook ad contact, and he said, like, do you want to go over your account? And I'm like, sure, let's, let's do it. And he's like, do you know what the average time is that people watch your video? And at that point, I thought it was converting because of the video. And it turned out that the average watch time was five seconds. I'm like, what? I put all this effort in my video. Like, nobody's even watching. Right? And that's when I realized that the first couple of seconds are the most important point like, of the whole video. The rest doesn't, it's, it matters, but not as much. So then I started... I basically used the exact same video, and I just used the first couple of seconds, I, I changed it, just to see what kind of pattern interrupt would work best, right? Um, only thing I tested is like the first couple of seconds, I'll just change it, and that had a huge impact on our, um, on our ROI as well. So make sure that you um, 
Make them curious in the first couple of seconds. Make sure it's not about getting them to sign up for the webinar. At that point, it's about getting them interested enough to keep watching that video, right? So make them curious. Don't start off saying like, turn up your sound, because people will just scroll down. You only have two or three seconds. And add a reward for attending. As I mentioned before, on the uh, beginning of the webinar, we always say like, hey, if you stick around till the end, you're gonna get X, Y, or Z, some kind of a freebie. And we actually mentioned that all the way in the ad already. So in the ad, I said like, hey, you know, we're, we're having this webinar, but you know what? If, you're, if you sign up right now and you join us, you will get X, Y, or Z at, at the end as well. And people actually, some people will just be there for the training, but some people will just show up for like, oh, that, that's exactly what I need, right? And they show up just to get that free thing. But while they're sitting through the whole presentation, you know, they, they get interested and they uh, become a customer as well. So it's a very uh, powerful one to improve your uh, conversions as well. And um, for those who, who know a bit about Facebook ads, uh, you, there's different ways you can actually target on Facebook. And the lookalike audiences is currently like the best converting ones. So basically what you will do is you would basically uh, upload the ones that you have consent for. I have to be strict with that from May 25th, right? Uh, the ones that you have consent for, you upload it as a custom audience to Facebook, all the email, uh, all the people that, for example, already bought their product. And then you're gonna say to Facebook, I create a custom audience for that. Create an audience for people who are similar to that, so you're a lookalike audience, or lo look alike my current customers, and run the ads to those people. And that's currently the best converting kind of audiences that you can target to. So I highly recommend if you're starting out, start with that first instead of trying to figure out <laughs> which interest am I gonna target and all of that, because that's a lot harder to get it converting. So start with the lookalike audiences and optimize for webinar signups, right? So you can say, well, I want to Facebook basically, what should they optimize for? What's the goal of your campaign? And you can say, I want to have as much traffic as possible, but that's not the best way uh, to do it. You want to make sure that you, they optimize for webinar signups, right? To let F Facebook decide who is most likely to actually sign up for your webinar. And it's going to take a couple of days, sometimes even longer, but after a while they'll know exactly like, who is most likely because they'll have a lot of data on everyone, who is most likely to actually sign up for the webinar. And um, that just converts a lot better than all the other options out there uh, for us and all of our tests. Um, and that's basically the lessons that we learned, some of the lessons that we learned while running Facebook ads. And that's, in a nutshell, sort of what the whole process is about. Create a great offer, you know, make it sexy, make sure it's a new opportunity, find a way how you can get it to convert, whatever your sales mechanism is, whether it's a sales page, a webinar, a phone call, like whatever it is, but you need to make sure that it's actually converting. And once you've got all of that down, you wanna start running ads to it um, with the tips that I just shared with you. And that's sort of like three, the three-step process that I'm using in, uh, in our businesses. And that's pretty much it. So, any questions? <laughs> Anyone got anything to share with the room? Yeah, all one. the way over. The, Jesus, come on, give yeah, it a break. break it. Second day, tired. Hi, um, how come you decided to ditch Visual Website Optimizer? Um, for for the split testing? Yeah, or it was on it was on one of the slides, and then afterwards you said you decided to manually yeah, for, split for test. for this funnel, like for some funnels, we're still using it because it's actually a really good tool. Are you using it? Yeah, well, I'm considering it. Yeah, well, I really like it. It's, um, but for, for um, web, like the tool Webinar Jam isn't as flexible in terms of like where you can add codes and whatnot. So for this particular one, it didn't work as accurate as I wanted it to be. Uh, and that's why we ditched it in this funnel. But for other places, we are using it. Uh, it was not tracking, like basically cross domain, uh, tracking wasn't working properly and when they go to Webinar Jam, it, it goes from one domain to another and like there, it was missing uh, part of the leads and that's why we couldn't trust the results. And, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else down this end? Middle, that's okay. Okay, yeah, you can stay there. Um, yeah, in regards to the recorded webinars, I'm not familiar with I mean, I'm familiar with the concept, but like practically, are you able to record a webinar and then make edits or cut things out or well, yeah, put stuff basically in? what you will do is every, once you do a live video, you will basically get the recording, which is basically a video file. And then like you can edit, just like any other video, you can edit it. And then you basically upload the video to a video uh -huh. platform like Vimeo or just Amazon S3. Uh -huh. And you use that video file. So you, before uploading it, you can make the changes that you want. 
Right, okay. Although I would not recommend removing the mistakes that you make because the more mistakes you make, it seems the better it converts. It's weird. Like when it's super slick, people are like, oh. but when you make some mistakes and like people sort of, you know, you, it makes a better connection, I think. Yeah. And, so and just leave your mistakes in there. And um, do you not get any pushback from when people can't ask questions at the end? What we, what we actually do, like initially we didn't, uh, but right now, right now for not 24-7, but for a big part of the day, we have uh, some on, on chat. So we actually give answers on chat. Oh, okay, thanks. No worries. Um, I do have a question from Twitter as well. Mm. Um, have you used Facebook Live? Do you think you could use that to your advantage? Yeah, I used Facebook Live. Um, but like for, in terms of the ads, like... Perhaps I'm not good enough on being. Some people are super like they're skilled and they can. They're like they're like slick and they do a live and it's perfect. And for me, for an ad to be good, I need to actually record it and edit it and like. So I prefer to do it not live, edit it out, and then I upload it as a video. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely use uh, Facebook Lives as well. I would not do the webinar itself on Facebook Live, by the way, because then there's like your Facebook Live along with. A thousand, a thousand distractions because people, Facebook is trying to get their, their attention, right? So that I would not. No one is going to watch a video on, for two hours on Facebook without seeing their niece's, once again, cat video, or whatever. Like, so I wouldn't do that. All right, one more. Um, great presentation. Thanks, Wilco. So uh, the offer that you're running the ad to at the end of the webinar, is that like a high ticket offer, like a year's worth of the service, or is it like a free trial, or what, do you, what is the yeah, offer exactly? Good question. Uh, so I, I always go for a yearly offer, uh, once again, because I want to have the ROI right away, and I know where, my, where it's at, because if it would be a trial, then um, probably wouldn't convert as well in this case. So I go for a yearly option because it makes sure like it's, I mean, that sweet spot of like uh, a couple hundred dollars up to a thousand dollars basically for our product. A couple hundred to a couple thousand? No, a couple hundred up to a thousand. I'm oh, not, okay. Like, that's sort of like the highest. I, I, I wouldn't go over a, a thousand, uh, but that could either be because it's not working or because it's outside my comfort zone. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I'm going up to early a thousand on the webinar. Okay, cool. What is your CAC per, um, what is your CAC cost per? Uh, honestly? Um, I don't like. I, I'm really ROI focused guy, so I know uh, the, the I know the the, the, um, the difference between money in versus money out, uh, which um, I I rather not mention publicly. You just you just know you're making profit. Huh? Yeah, yeah, okay, I know that's exactly. Fine. Like, yeah, okay, that, cool. Yeah, and awesome. it's all happening in the first couple of days, and everything after is like second year or whatever. It's just free money. Cool. Okay. Um, oh, there's one, one last question right oh, before I was about to shut this down. It's from one of our competitors. Oh, that's a bad one. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull my passport now. <laughs> uh, no, so you said that uh, video ads uh, work really well. Uh, but does it mean that uh, the other ads, not video ads, don't work? From your experience, they don't work at all? Or just video ads work so much better than uh, you, you, So you're asking whether image ads can still work? Right? You're basically asking whether, even if you're not doing video ads, could it still work? Exactly. It, yeah, we have we have some image ads that are working, but um, especially for cold audience, people who've never heard of us before, um, we struggle with that. We get it to be profitable at a low scale, like when we don't spend as much. But typically, when you start to spend more, it starts to be less effective. Um, like that's how the Facebook algorithm works. Like if you, if you, it's going to be different compared to if you spend a thousand dollars a month versus if you spend fifty thousand. Like you're going to, your your cost per lead or per customer is going to go up. And uh, as soon as you spend more, then the image ads for our cult audiences uh, are not profitable anymore, and the video ads are. But for retargeting audiences, uh, image ads work work perfectly fine. Yep, in our experience, but.